Our first segment, therefore, was focused on prices. And that is an issue of today that we need to grapple with. Our second part of news today is focused with an issue that we've been tracking, but an issue that revives history. Remember, two days ago, Defense Minister Rajnath Singh at a book launch claimed that Veer Savarkar, icon of Hindutva, revolutionary leader, wrote mercy petitions to the British government at the advice of Mahatma Gandhi. This reignited a political showdown over Savarkar. The opposition accused the BJP in particular of distorting history. I'm going to speak to uh, the great grandson of the Mahatma in a moment, but before that, listen in to what Savarkar's relative, Ranjit Savarkar, had to say. I will say Savarkar uh, was urged by Gandhi, but Savarkar advised, uh, sorry, Gandhi advised Savarkar's brother in 1920 to file a petition. But before that also, Savarkar has written a petition. Uh, I want to add here one more thing. See, it's not a question whether uh, on Savarkar's, uh, Savarkar has followed Gandhi's advice or before that uh, where Gandhi was uh, there to give him advice because he has uh, filed some petitions from 1911 itself. So. Uh, thing is main important ki Gandhi supported Savarkar's contention in his petitions and he later wrote two articles also and he says ki now if Savarkar is changing his stand and he uh, is coming to the peaceful way I must welcome him and his talents and his brother's talent should be used for the nation and he, he has gone ahead and he said ki Savarkar is paying the price uh, for his patriotism by staying in Andaman thing is Savarkar uh, wrote all these petitions for all this one and he has every petition he has mentioned that if my release is coming between the release of other uh, revolutionaries, they should be released and not I. And every petition he has mentioned it. And his petitions were treated by Britishers as a, a petition for general amnesty of political prisoners. So how is Tushar Gandhi, great grandson of Mahatma Gandhi, seeing this controversy? Tushar Gandhi, how do you see it? Are we reviving history to, in a sense, demonize one person one day, lionize the same person the next? Is that what history has got trapped in between demonizing Savarkar when the Congress was in power to now lionizing him when the BJP was in power, is in power? That's uh, that's always been the uh, case. There's nothing surprising it, uh, with it. But now history is being used or exploited to distract us, to take away our attention from what are the critical issues that we should be all grappling with. And saying, uh, instead, we are wasting time on uh, something that happened so many years ago, which has no consequence for today. While saying that, I would also say, but there is a uh, necessity to prevent the corruption of uh, history and a motivated political corruption of history is a very dangerous thing and so it has to be spoken up the truth has to be spoken up loudly because today that is the time of decibels you know it, you speak in a calm modulated low voice uh, people just don't register your opinion and so uh, the one who shouts the loudest seems to become the icon of truth it's mm. unfortunate that we've stooped to that level but but, but tushar uh, gandhi what but to tushar gandhi what you just a minute you what you're calling the corruption and the distortion of history the response is this is the truthification that we are in a way providing uh, history according to those who are today writing it uh, to correct some of the distortion that have been crept uh, that have crept in including this uh, the view in this instance that Gandhi in 1920 uh, does provide, however briefly, and clearly not uh, advising Savarkar to go in for a mercy petition, but a brief petition as he calls it. And therefore, this also needs to be put out in the public domain. Why should history only put out one view? Why not this a counter view? Never, this, was never, this was never hidden, Raji. The, you know, today it's become very fashionable to say something, then claim that that was hidden. And we have, unfortunately, we have a whole citizenry which is so blinded by the blinkers that have been purposely put on their eyes that whenever somebody comes up and says, no, no, you have not been told this before and it has been hidden, that's why I'm uh, revealing the truth to you. People have stopped thinking that, uh, you know, everything pertaining to Gandhi, I won't talk about anything else because 
you have uh, called me here because I'm the great grandson of Gandhi, and uh, maybe I'm only capable of talking about him. But when it comes to him, his history was recorded by his contemporaries in his time, right while it was happening, and it's all available in the public domain. There's no secret about it. So there's no question about anything being hidden so far, and only now the honest historians are revealing it to the people and things. This is a boogie that has been very cleverly exploited by the Sanghi brand of historians who have used it multiple times and unfortunately successful. But the but the isn't it ironical in a way? You're saying you're calling it you even using a word like a Sanghi brand of historian, but isn't it I I won't go into the name calling, but either way, which I'm not are calling. you I'm is it not ironical? His, I'm stating that, is it facts, not ironical, Gandhi. Tushar Gandhi, that Gandhi is being used in a way to exonerate Savarkar because one of the darker aspects and let's be fair, none of us went through Kalapani but the fact is that Savarkar allegedly sought an apology from the British and this has always been used against Savarkar. Now ironically, Savarkar's exoneration in a way is taking place by using Gandhi who you and others claim in your books was assassinated by Savarkar or suddenly the thought belief system that Savarkar represented? Absolutely. Unfortunately, uh, uh, Rajdeep, for those who really don't subscribe to Gandhi also, who in their hearts cherish uh, the ideology represented by both Savarkar and Godse in uh, equal uh, uh, factors, have to revert to Gandhi to provide the seal of belief the only the new the use of the name of gandhi gives them the credibility to pass off their half truths and uh, things so that sterling quality of gandhi everybody wants to utilize it's it's uh, for to me it's a, a matter of great pride that even those who in their heart uh, uh, enshrine his murderer have to resort back to bapu to gain credibility that's a very interesting way to put it, that those who in a way would, had, you believe, this hatred for Gandhi and what Gandhi represented, have to use Gandhi to enhance their own credibility. Am I correct? Absolutely. Just that it's not just my belief, it's a fact. Okay. Interesting argument which should spark off hopefully a calm, rational, reasoned debate rather than the polarized noise that's taking place around us? Rajdeep, I think the media has to uh, may, uh, come to an understanding that this is an unnecessary debate that is being prolonged for so long only because it serves the purpose of uh, you know, pushing the real issues aside. Stop. Please stop. India is suffering. India is fatally wounded. Save India. Don't waste time on history like this, please. Okay. Let me leave it there, Tushar Gandhi. Uh, I appreciate your joining us and giving us your perspective. Thanks very much for joining me here on the news today, tonight.